Hi, Pisces. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for March of 2021, which is, of course, the month when the sign of Pisces begins. And so your birthday is coming and you're now in your yearly mop up period um, as of the beginning of March, at least. And there is no better time to get a reading. And that's because your personal new year is about to begin and you can hit the ground running. If you want that, please look in the YouTube description below. Well, Saturn is really busy this year, traveling along the sign of Aquarius, and right there it is in your 12th house. And Saturn brings discipline and structure and makes demands in whatever area it's traveling through. In your case, um, being Pisces, that means the 12th house, or if you have Pisces rising and you've late Pisces rising, it might mean the 11th house. So I'm going to say a little bit about each. Um, the 12th house is your house. It's the house of dreams and imaginings. It's the house of spirit and the otherworldly. It's a house of solitude and compassion. And so you can expect this year and probably next year too, as Saturn continues in Aquarius, that you're going to be tested on these things. You're going to be tested on what do you do with your retreat time? Do you use it to rejuvenate yourself or do you use it to escape? And, and let your life fall apart? And um, how does spirituality fit into your life? And um, how, you know, how do you draw on that? And do you have any disciplined practices within the realm of that? With Saturn in your 11th house, uh, you're gonna be facing perhaps the feeling of judgment and criticism coming from friends. Your friends may be, mm, sort of putting you into a box these days. You may feel judged by them, but it may be that their point of view is necessary for you to contain yourself in some way. They may have messages for you about ways to take responsibility that could better your life. So there's some thoughts about Saturn. You can find out more about Saturn in Aquarius on our 2021 news playlist on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, and I recommend that you check that out. So we've got news about the usual inner planets, Mars, Mercury, and Venus, and also the moons. Hey, Julia, what's up for Pisces this month? Mm, well, hi there, Pisces. I'll begin with Mars. It starts the month in your in Taurus, which is actually your third house, but it quickly moves into Gemini on March 3rd, which is your fourth house. So if you do want to find out what it would be like for the first two days of the month having Mars in Taurus, I recommend you check out our last month's video because we cover that pretty well. But for the majority of March, Mars is going to be in your fourth house of family and home. Mm -hmm. So with Mars, this is a planet of action and a activity, when it comes into the fourth house, it can go one of a few ways. It could mean that you're either expending a lot of energy on the home front, maybe doing a lot of home projects, um, or it could mean that you could be running into conflict and frustrations with the people you live with, including family members as well. So probably want to go for the first option over the second one if you could try to get out the energy in more constructive ways. Hmm. Then Mercury, the planet of communication and mentation, is finished its retrograde period, but you're still reverberating from it. We all are um, until about March 6 when Mercury kind of picks up to its regular speed again. But it starts the month in your 12th house. Um, and this is the house of the subconscious. This is the house of isolation. So during this cycle, at least the first half of the month, you might, might be a lot more inclined to be keeping your ideas and your thoughts kind of to yourself mm. um, instead of sort of sharing them with other people too. Then on the 15th, Mercury moves into your first house, which is the house of self. And then you're going to be a lot more outspoken. You're going to be a lot more wanting to kind of, a lot more articulate too. This will be a great transit if you need to make a good first impression with somebody, especially intellectually. Um, and, um, and yeah, and you'll, you'll be kind of a little bit more willing to share your ideas with other people. Mm -hmm. Then Venus, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships, begins the month in Pisces, which is your first house. And she's going to stay there until March 21st, so most of the month. And that's pretty sweet because that means you're going to be embodying those Venus vibes, meaning mm. that this will actually, this whole month will be a wonderful time if you have to make any first, good first impressions on anybody because Venus in here also makes you a lot more likable, a lot more charming, a lot more attractive too. This is also a wonderful transit if you want to do anything to beautify your looks, whether you want to get a haircut, whether you want to buy a new outfit, get a new tattoo, wonderful time 
time for it. Then after the 21st, Venus is going to be in your second house of money. And you're going to be feeling like spending money on the good things in life during that cycle too. Uh, the second house represents not only money, but possessions. And Venus rules beauty. She also rules luxury items and art. So those could be things that you might be wanting to invest your money into in that cycle. Mm. Well, to go back a little bit earlier in the month, on the 13th, we have got a new moon in Pisces, and we're calling this one Dreams of Partnership because of its many planets in Pisces and also the involvement of Juno. So notice that the sun and the moon are here with Neptune and Venus, and then they square Juno. So a lot of themes of partnership here, and especially because these things are placed in your first house of identity, and... Um, and so discovering yourself as a partner and, and figuring out, you know, how do I coalesce? How do I know what I want? And, um, and how do I, from that place, attract something that's healthy and good for me? Um, and I think that Juno has a lot to contribute and also particularly on the work front because it's in the 10th house. So uh, partnership um, in career may also be a factor under this moon. The second moon of this month is uh, also very much to do with relationship. It's happening on the 28th and it's a full moon in Libra. Here we see the moon in Libra opposite the sun in Aries. There's a grouping of planets here in Aries, which is your second house. Um, and Venus is there again. So we're calling this one love and healing and the healing factor has to do with Chiron but also Saturn has a really nice connection to this moon. Saturn here in your 12th house, which I mentioned earlier, forms a trine to the moon and a sextile to the sun and these planets. And so it's helping to mediate the stress and the tension of the full moon. So um, the, these Aries planets in the second house uh, of money might have you feeling um, like you have to fight for what's yours. And yet the moon in Libra in the eighth house might make you feel like, well, I should be fair and I should share. But Saturn, which could be the word from the outside, possibly a friend or other community member, helping you to mediate this with your partner, um, that might just be, you know, somebody stepping in and bringing some objectivity and some distance and, uh, and helping you find what truly is fair in between uh, what both people want. So um, on March 20th, the season of Aries begins and it's springtime. And um, there is such a feeling of, you know, um, life springing forth when Aries begins. It's really the beginning of the year that is happening in your second house, which is going to bring some of the spotlight of attention to the arena of money for you. And, um, and asking yourself about, you know, what do I need to do? What do I need to conquer in order to become more secure? So that may become a preoccupation in the season of Aries. So we've been saying for a couple of months now, and it's even truer than before, now that Mercury retrograde is over, that March is really good for starting new projects. And it does have to do with this spring energy. It also has to do with the fact that all of the outer planets are direct at once. In fact, there's nothing in this chart that's retrograde except Vesta over there. And, um, and so there's a lot of sort of um, forward motion and momentum. And that is like a current that you can get on and ride it where you want it to go. So um, Pluto is going to go retrograde next month and Saturn will go retrograde the month after that. And, uh, and once those things start happening, we're going to start to feel like the projects that we begin now um, are going to face some obstacles. But um, starting things in March is, is just going to be so much better. So um, basically, I want to leave you with that quote from Goethe about boldness because um, this is a really good time to begin that thing whatever it is that you've been wanting to do he said whatever you can do or dream you can begin it boldness has genius power and magic in it and especially pisces if you wanted to begin something in the financial realm 
um, this is a really good time and you should just get started. And uh, that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, please share it widely, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Find your way over to our website where uh, pandoraastrology.com where you can find horoscopes and uh, also the news of the month where you can get readings or even take a class and we would love to meet you. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.